I'm here to make a new person on the internet's fan base hate me and chew bubble gum. And I'm all out of gum. <laughs> Hello everybody, my name is Kim. Welcome to today's video. Thank you everybody so much for the nice response to the last video. I was not intending it at all to be me, like, fishing for compliments, but uh, you guys just said a lot of really nice things and I appreciate it so much. Really good to know that if I am ever feeling down about my content, I can just kind of acknowledge it and there's people who will give me support and it's just, it's so nice. I don't even know what to say. Thank you. But today we're going to be getting back to doing what I do best. Well, maybe not what I do best, but doing a thing that I do. <laughs> and that is talking about some potentially problematic content. We'll start this off with a fun little fact about me that you might not know. I've had sex. <laughs> yeah. Funner fact, more than once. <laughs> I'm pretty cool. <laughs> funner, funner fact, <laughs> with more than one person. <laughs> but not at once, not into that weird ass freaky shit. We here at Kimberly T, which by that I mean me, it's literally just me here. We subscribe to the George Michael rules of sex. Sex is natural, sex is fun, and sex is best when it is one on one. Just kidding. We subscribe to the George Michael rules of sex. Only have sex with your cousin. <laughs> just kidding. I'm a virgin. Please help me. If you got both of those references, we are the same person and I love you. If you didn't get them, that's okay. I'm gonna just move on now. So speaking of virgins, let's talk about somewhere where virgins like to hang out a lot. TikTok. <laughs> Problematic content on TikTok is a subject matter that I have discussed before. <laughs> There's a lot of really cool creative stuff on TikTok. I still use it pretty much every day. I love it. I think it's super fun. While a lot of the user base is people that are just pouring with youthfulness like me. We all know if our generation was determined by our personality, I would 100% be a boomer, but I'm like right at the cutoff, so I don't actually know what I am. Let me know down in the comments if you think that a 98 baby is a Gen Z or a millennial, because I have no fucking idea. But it doesn't matter. There's a lot of young people on TikTok, but there are also a lot of older people that are making informational content for the young people on TikTok. Now, I think it's pretty safe to say that TikTok is not an app where you go to seek out information. You go to scroll. Like when you see something that you're interested in on TikTok, you don't go, wow, that was so interesting and insightful. I'm gonna go seek out more information about this topic and then go back to TikTok. That does not happen. You see a clip, it's probably about 15 seconds long, and then you scroll to the next one, which will probably be about a completely different topic. This forced like briefness, brevity, is brevity a word? Is something that exists on like a lot of social media like if you think about the character limits on twitter or something like that but i think the difference is that on almost any other social media there's a lot more room for linking to other social media platforms or linking to a source where you could have more information on a topic like allowing a link to another website or like a long caption on a picture or even just like hashtags which TikTok does have but nobody really uses them. Now I think we should hold all social media creators responsible for the stuff that they're sharing but um, I think TikTok is in this weird zone where I almost hold them more responsible because it's this weird place where people are just going to see the information, take it in, and just move on to the next thing without really looking further into it. So that brings us to this lady who is the topic of today's video. Her name is Veronique. Fuck. Si vous ne savez pas, je parle aussi le français. Et c'est vraiment tellement difficile d'être bilingue parce que parfois l'accent français doit sortir. C'est dans mon uh, anyway, yeah, this is who we're gonna be talking about. Her name is Veronique Anderson. I think she does have a following on some other social media, but I found more than enough to talk about with just her TikTok, so that's gonna be the focus today. Her profile says that she wants to encourage women to love their periods, which, as a woman with PCOS, it's a little bit difficult to love something that isn't really present in my life and only shows up when it feels like it. But I can 100% get behind this lady's goal. Um, I don't necessarily think I would phrase it as like, loving your period is what's important but i think that period stuff has been so taboo for so long that it's about time that people should just get used to it it should just be normal but the videos that this lady makes that i saw first were not about periods she also makes videos about sexuality this is the first one of hers that i saw it is encouraging women to not feel ashamed if they can't orgasm through penetration <laughs> you know how some people say you shouldn't have sex if you're not comfortable talking about sex that's why I'm a virgin. So I saw this video and I said, yes, girl, absolutely. I mean, you shouldn't feel ashamed if you can't orgasm in any way, but uh, it is very normal, very natural, and totally okay to not be able to have an orgasm through penetration. Boys, 
Hope you wrote that down. Some of you need to know that. And like, look at this lady. She looks so cool. She looks badass. She's bomb. Like, I love everything about this. Maybe not that she's calling me a goddess, actually. Ma'am, if I'm a goddess, then I hope you know that I am also an atheist because I do not believe in myself. <laughs> So I saw this video, I liked it, and then a few more of her videos started popping up on my feed. A lot of her content is a little bit more like spiritually driven. I don't really know how else to describe it. She talks about treating her vagina like a person and also about smelling her vagina. Don't smell me. I have my own thoughts about all that. You guys can probably guess what it is. Um, but ultimately I'm not against that kind of stuff if at the end of the day it helps you develop a better relationship with yourself and learn your own body a bit better. But as I started watching more of her content, the problems that I started to have were happening when she was trying to present the things that she was saying as actual factual information. So for example, there's this one where she's talking about how the clitoris is a little bit bigger than it looks from the outside. She also said that it's bigger than a resting penis penis, which put the idea of a penis needing to rest in my head, which is very funny to me. <laughs> little guy going for a nap. Yeah, that's right. I said little. Fuck you. <laughs> the size thing obviously like varies a lot and would change completely from person to person. I think around the same size is what they actually think. But you know, this is this is pretty much true. This is a true piece of information. And then I saw this one, which I am just going to play for you. Nice and nice and oh yeah, let's do it again. Why do people do this to me? Why? Now I'm not going to speak to the intentions of the woman sharing this information. She, as far as I know, probably thinks it's completely true and genuinely thinks that she's helping people by telling people this. But I'm going to be a little bit angrier and more blunt than I would normally be in what I'm about to say. But uh, the piece of information that she shared in this TikTok is based on a myth that is bullshit propaganda that is made to shame women specifically for the amount of partners that they've had. Now this woman did not just magically like make up this thing herself, I'm not saying that. And there's enough people in the comments saying very adamantly that this is a scientific fact and that this is completely true, that I think it's actually worth getting into. Get into the science in just a second. You can be patient with me, okay? Just me saying the word science is already more scientific than this lady chose to go in her video, just saying. But before that, let's take like a big step back and think about it. Like, let's say that this was true. Every person that you've had sex with gets imprinted on you. You're carrying them with you. What the fuck does that mean? Listen, I do tend to go for scrawny dudes, okay? But I think I would weigh a little bit more than I did now if I was carrying around every person that I've ever had sex with. I promise you, the only time I'm carrying them is in our conversations after we have sex. <laughs> just trying to get a step ahead of the comments that say, like, you're just jealous because you're bitter and unfulfilled. <laughs> Yes, I'm sitting here making a video about this right now because I'm very unfulfilled by my sex life. You caught me. Anyway, especially when she doesn't provide any actual information in the TikTok, it's like, what information can you draw from this? Nothing, I don't think. I think you can make this mean whatever you want. And some people in the comments tried to point out how harmful and terrifying this would be to somebody who had gone through abuse, which like, yeah, it fucking would. I tried to say that she didn't mean for it to apply to those people, but then like, is it true or is it not true? Because you can't have it both ways. Spoiler, it's not true, but we're gonna get to that. Ignoring all of that, also, your womb is like up there. That's the part where the babies grow. I know that because I've had sex. <laughs> Unless he's a fucking surgeon or something, no fingers or penis or anything should be touching your womb. I mean, if he's a surgeon, then no penis should be touching your womb anyway. Maybe it's some really niche surgery, I don't know. <laughs> and this woman knows this because she made another video about how the vagina gets longer when a woman gets turned on, which is true. She does say that the cervix like moves out of the way, which isn't quite true, but like the, the distance between your cervix and the opening of your vagina gets longer when you get turned on, right? She knows that the womb and stuff is on the other side of the cervix, I'm sure of it. So they are not going to be touching your womb during sex. However, there's a chance that their sperm might touch your womb. I know I have smart viewers, so I know what you're all thinking, and we will get there in a second, but I think that whole thing is where this myth comes from. Basically, there has been male DNA that has been found in women. I think at first it was found in the brain, and then it was found in the bloodstream and other places too. And then I guess some scientists spent about 0.2 seconds thinking about it, which, if we're magically allowed to say things and then it manifests into truth, I'm just gonna say that 0.2 seconds is how long it takes the average male scientist to start thinking about their penis. It's also the amount of time it takes them to have an orgasm. 0.3 seconds on a good day. 
So anyway, then they were like, well, it must be from my dick. Now in another life, in another YouTube video, maybe I would have just said, this is bullshit. And moved on. But curveball. <laughs> uh, I took high school biology all four years. I know things about science, okay? But I do want to explain really briefly what is the actual science behind this. First of all, you, person watching this video, whoever you are, I love you very much. Mwah. You are not your DNA. I would like to make that very clear. Identical twins have extremely similar DNA and they can be different people. In fact, I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that all identical twins are different people than their twins. <laughs> We have cloned animals and they can act differently than the animals that they were cloned from. Your DNA might be a link to you, it might be a recipe to make a person that looks like you, but it is not you. You also probably know men have XY chromosomes, women have XX chromosomes. This is important because this is why they were able to detect the men's DNA in the women. The XY chromosomes stick out in a big old swamp of XX chromosomes. <laughs> I'm not explaining that very well, but just bear with me. We are explaining this in Kim language, which will use words like swamp. <laughs> now we can get into what this means, what it means to find this residual DNA in just a second, but it is important to note that it is not the DNA of people that these women have slept with, especially since this DNA can also be found in children. There's a few different ways that they think that this DNA can become present. It can be through organ transplants, blood transfusions. This DNA can also come from siblings. So if there's an older brother, his DNA is basically just hanging out in the mom and then that can get passed along to the younger female sibling. But also keep in mind it is not just male DNA that does this to females. There is no reason why there wouldn't also be residual DNA from an older female sibling in the male. It is just the DNA that they were able to detect. We as humans really truly are nesting dolls and there's all kinds of weird stuff going on inside us that science is still working to figure out. So going back to this TikTok, I think that this is where this woman is getting her information from. And that is just that this DNA can become present in a woman because of pregnancy. And it can be a pregnancy that comes to full term or does not. Pretty much all pregnant women end up taking in the DNA of their fetus at some point, which makes sense because you're like growing this weird little alien. I don't like babies. <laughs> and in some, this DNA will stick around for a long time, like way longer than the seven years that this woman said. And in other people, it won't stick around. And if the woman with the like lingering DNA has a baby, that is where the DNA can get passed along to the child, which is what I was talking about before. Really interesting and it's really cool. And it also kind of grosses me out to think about it. So for anybody, however they got this DNA in them, what are the implications of this? It must be something really bad and scary since all these people are so concerned about it. The answer is, we don't really know. They do think that there is a potential that it might be linked to autoimmune diseases, but some also think it could be beneficial. So all that being said, <sighs> look this stuff up if you're interested in it, by the way, it's really cool. Does this mean that men imprint on you for seven years after you have sex with them? No. I actually have no idea where she's getting the seven years thing from. I think she's basing that off of the fact that it takes about seven to ten years for every cell in your body to regenerate. That kind of confuses me because that has nothing to do with anything I was just talking about. The answer is no. <laughs> you do not carry somebody with you for seven years after you have sex with them. That is ignoring all the different types of sex that you can have with all the different types of people when really it's just if you, a fertile person with a vagina, have unprotected sex with a fertile person who has a penis and that sex results in a pregnancy, then there is a chance that you might absorb some of the brand new DNA that is created as a result of that pregnancy. And then it will join the God knows whatever the fuck else is already floating around inside you. So no, somebody does not imprint on you just because you've had sex with them. And no, <laughs> it is not a reason to feel shame for the number of partners you've had or the number of partners that you want to have. At the most, this is the least of many, many, many other way more compelling reasons to practice safe sex and use birth control. What do we see in the comments of this post? We can see examples of women shaming other women for their sex lives. Now I'm sure because these people are all saying that this is a scientific fact and is backed up by science, I'm sure they're really just worried about the potential link I was talking about between this thing and autoimmune disorders. I'm sure that's what's going on. Right? There's not really substantial evidence for it yet, but they're just way, way, way over cautious and concerned. I'm sure that's what's going on. That's all well and good. That's wonderful. So I actually came up with a little bit of a plan for them. Since sex only really causes this if it's a result of pregnancy, kill all men. <laughs> Just kidding. In case you did not know that that was a, a joke. But the only way that sex causes this thing is through pregnancy. So just give out condoms to all the people that you're so concerned about that are just trying to have nice consensual sex with each other. Uh, since condoms are 98% effective at preventing pregnancy. 
and then that way you can focus all your attention on shaming the people who are really causing this thing that doesn't really matter at all, which is of course people that are having a lot of children. I'm, I'm sure you're just as likely to go and shame them, right? Unless this is not a thing that is actually based on science and is just another fucked up way that we've come up with to shame women for their sexuality. And the woman who made this video doesn't care about the science. For this woman who presents herself as like an advocate and seems to want to support women to be presenting this information that shames women and has no basis in truth, um, I, I just, I don't think that is good. And unfortunately, this is not the first piece of misinformation that she shared on her page. She has said that the uterus doubles in size while you're on your period, which is not true. She made this video which she's implying that she got PCOS because she went on birth control. Going on birth control can absolutely fuck up your body, that's why it's important to talk to a doctor about it before you start on it, but there is not evidence that going on birth control gives you PCOS. Birth control just masks the symptoms of PCOS so you probably wouldn't have realized you had it until you went off of it. And she's implied that free bleeding, so not using a tampon or a pad, a thing that does not touch anything inside your body uh, will make your period cramps better. And then I've also noticed that when she gets called out for saying things that aren't true, she just kind of says like, oh, I, I appreciate you commenting. Like, well, I would appreciate if you didn't tell young girls things that aren't true about their bodies. She gives this information. She's presenting it as actual science. And then when she's pressed about it, she says, oh, I didn't mean it as actual science. But then she likes comments of other people saying, no, this false thing is actual science. And I know it doesn't matter that I say this because I will get the comments anyway, but I'm really not trying to hate on this lady at all. I think this lady is really fucking cool, okay? She has bomb hair. She has better moves than I do. She should absolutely keep giving women advice on how to be in touch with their bodies and normalize period stuff and recommend menstrual cups. But when you look in the comments of her videos, it's honestly heartbreaking to me because there are dozens of examples of young girls reaching out to her for advice and viewing her as like a mentor. And I just draw the line there because she has not shown that she is a person who is presenting accurate, reliable information. And she is not a person that young girls should be going to to get anything that's bordering on actual medical advice. One lady that I personally follow who seems to give good accurate information on TikTok is this lady Stacy. Uh, you can go follow her if you really want to get information about your vagina from TikTok. But obviously also do your own research and don't get all your information from 15 second clips that you find on an app that China is using to spy on you. <laughs> Thank you everybody so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, you can check out a video that I made about pro-life TikToks. Just be careful when you read the comments. And I will see you on the next video where I will be talking about something else.